The suspected child molester has no regard for the officers or other vehicles on the road. He pulled into the right lane to attempt to pass a slower moving vehicle. The slower moving vehicle pulled over and there was a collision between this other vehicle and the semi. No one is injured. The officers attribute that to luck. They know the situation can only get worse. Fortunately, state troopers are waiting for the reckless driver up the road. The state patrol officer put spike strips out. The suspect swerves around the stop sticks as if he knew they were there. The trucker seems to be one step ahead, and the police find out why. As we continued along, we had received intel from other truckers that he had a monitor in his cab picking up some of the police signals. We couldn't go to a coded channel because the other agencies wouldn't be able to hear us. The officers think quickly and turn the line of communication to their advantage. They try to reason with the fugitive driver. You know, we're not going to go away. You might as well just stop. The trucker ignores Detective Bauer's pleas. Now, Deputy Benke enters the chase. I noticed the chase coming southbound on 13. I got ahead of it. Deputy Benke races ahead to set up his own stop sticks. He pulls to the side of the road, putting himself in a potentially deadly situation. Now come to your location. When he swerved, basically destroyed my squad. The deputy is not hurt, but the trucker's actions have raised the stakes. He's used his truck as a deadly weapon. At that point, since he had intentionally rammed the squad car, Marathon County authorized use of deadly force to stop the vehicle. The suspect goes into a second county, drawing even more agencies and policemen into the deadly chase. My concerns weren't for me, it was for any officers responding, not understanding the sheer mass and power of the vehicle. Detective Bowers gives the trucker one final warning. You need to pull over and stop now before you get shot. Bad things are about to happen if you don't stop. As we went through one of the cities farther south on State Highway 13, there was an officer that was off the side of the road. He fired one round into the cab of the semi. The first shot was 12-gauge double-odd buck. All nine rounds went right through the headrest of the driver's seat. But the suspect ducks, avoiding the shots. It looks like the chase will continue until the determined officers force this hostile trucker off the road. The semi then hit additional spike strips, which resulted in the tires shredding, knocking large chunks of fiberglass off the track. The large chunks of fiberglass put the officers' lives in even greater danger. I'm on the left side of the tractor, attempting to alert oncoming traffic. The road is running out for the suspect, and the officers know this could be their best chance to bring the chase to an end. There was a large area of construction that narrowed down to a choke point where we knew if we got spike sticks across the entire roadway, we couldn't swerve around them. Marshfield officers completely spiked the roadway. As Collins drove through there, several more tires blew out. His tires completely gone. The semi slows down, but will not stop until it runs out of gas or the officers make it stop. I could see the Marshfield officer on the side of the road firing at the truck. Fired rounds into the radiator. And ended up taking out the cooling system. The truck finally comes to a crawling stop, and the suspect jumps out the passenger side. The officers approach, so the suspect has decided it's time to give up. He laid on the grass and surrendered. 